In this lesson, we're going to begin adding UVs to our object. Let's start off by talking a little bit about what UVs are. So uh, we'll do that by bringing up a program called Mischief, and I'll use it as kind of a whiteboard. So we have a 3D object. Let's actually, let's talk about presence. That's probably the easiest way to go about this. Let's say you have a present and this present is in a box, right? So you have this box and you have this wrapping paper. Yeah. Little Christmas trees, let's do that. Right, whatever, right? And so, So you have to somehow wrap this, this uh, sheet around this 3D object. Well, what do you need? So you, you go ahead, you take this, you put it on top, right? And you have the wrapping paper kind of coming on top of it like this. Right, which is great for covering one side but now we have to wrap it around these other sides. So what do we need? Well, we need a pair of scissors. Right? And we need some, that looks like a cherry or something, sorry. And we need, you know, a piece of tape, right? I don't know, tape dispenser, you get it. All right, so tape. All right. So what we do is we end up cutting little slits here in order to get it to actually fold over, right? Well, in essence, this is what we're doing when we're, we do UVs. We have these 3D objects being, you know, whether they're like our room, and or our uh, or some of our more complex shapes like our doorway or our barrels, right? And we have to figure out a way to take this 2D image, which is gonna be our texture, and wrap it around these different shapes. Well, in order to do that, we're gonna to have to start cutting into these shapes, separating them piece by piece in order to perfectly wrap this around these objects. So that's what we do when we're doing UVs. Let's go ahead and jump back into Blender and I'll get started on how to do that. So the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and apply our mirror modifier, right? We're gonna UV these with uh, the floor as a single width object, meaning we won't have this side and then this side, we're just gonna have this entire floor. So we'll go ahead, hit our uh, select our mirror and hit apply. Apply means that we've accepted whatever the modifier is currently set to, right? Uh, if we hit this X, it completely removes it, which we don't want. So we want, this is basically okay, and this is cancel. So let's go ahead and hit apply. Oh, let's exit out of uh, edit mode, hit apply. And now the uh, mirror modifier is gone and the mirror is has been accepted. So let's go ahead and let's select. First of all, uh, actually, now that we've done that, let's switch to our UV layout. So we'll click this button here where it says default, and you'll notice we have a couple of different layouts. We've got 3D full view, animation, compositing. Now, these are pretty simple. You can build them by yourself, you know, by uh, adjusting windows, but it's kind of nice to have these quick options to do it. So what we want to do is go ahead and switch to UV editing. All right, so notice in UV editing, all of our other windows are closed except for this one, which is our 2D image view, and this one, which is our 3D view. What we're gonna do is go ahead and first create a new texture map. Um, those texture maps are really there just so you can kind of get a gauge for how a texture is gonna get applied, how your actual texture will get applied to your objects. So we'll go ahead and we'll click new, and it gives us a couple of options. First, it asks us for a name. So we'll call this UV test map. 
All right, asks us for width. This isn't really important, so I'll just keep it at the default, which is a, a 1K texture. And then it asks us what color and what alpha, well, it, or if we want an alpha. We don't need an alpha for this. And uh, for the generated type, we don't want it to be blank. We want it to be some sort of grid so we can get a, an idea of how everything is laying out. And you'll see that in a minute. We'll select color grid and we'll hit OK. And what you notice is it creates this image that has uh, colors, grid squares, and these like, you know, map coordinates almost, A1, A2, A3, etc. All right, so what that does is if we switch our view mode here from, uh, by clicking this button, from uh, solid to texture, we'll start to see the textures that we have applied. And right now we have nothing applied, so we don't see it. However, if we go ahead and select these uh, polygons here and apply some sort of UVs, we'll see them uh, here in the window. So let's go ahead and select them. Let's go to shading UVs. And for UV mapping, we're just going to select, let's, let's start off with a, a project from view. All right, so project from view, what it does is it takes our, um, uh, our polygons and lays them out exactly how the view looks in our 3D viewport. So notice it's got this uh, small angle and a harsh angle. Basically, whatever shape it is here, that's the shape it is over here. Let's go ahead and load our um, UV test map again by clicking this button and selecting UV test map. So what you'll see is these coordinates, these points right here have a um, corresponding coordinate here. So here where we see F4, we'll also see it here in our, our image. Where we see D4 here in the center, we see it here in our UV view, right? So wherever these points are in 2D space, that's what texture is getting mapped to them in 3D space. So that's great and all, but this is very much not what we want. Ideally, what we would want is for the grids to flow this way and this way, right? So what we're going to do is switch to our top view. And instead of having this uh, perspective view, we're going to switch to orthographic, which means it's not going to give us a sense of depth. So let's go ahead and hit 5. And now we're getting a... Uh, orthographic view, a flat view. However, the problem is now we can't see what we're working on. So let's hide everything in our scene that isn't what we currently have selected by hitting Shift-H. Right, so now what we see is just this polygon. We'll go ahead and reproject from view. And now what you'll see is that they fit there perfectly. The last thing that we want to do is make sure that this plane occupies the entire grid. This has a lot to do with texture resolution as well as tiling. Because sometimes if we put a tileable texture, we want these to be flushed along the edge so that for the next grid square, it'll have the same thing, the same tile repeating. So let's go ahead and hit A to select both of them. By the way, you'll notice if you hit Control Tab, you have the same selection options in the 2D view that you would in the 3D view. Okay. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll set, select Face. You can also select Island, which basically means any. It'll select all of the connected you uh, connected objects here, right? And we can use our the same controls that we do in 3D. So we can grab, we can rotate or we can scale. So we can actually try to scale this to make it fit. However, it's a little imprecise and not exact. And if you're not exact, you're going to get a little line right here when you do tiling. The best way to do it is by actually using Control P, which is the shortcut for pack. And what that does is it makes what you currently have selected occupy the entire square. So we'll select these two, hit Control P and make it snap to all the edges. Now this is great, except right now it's upside down. We have A here, 
and h here. I mean, I guess if we were looking at it from the other direction, it would be right side up. But let's go ahead, and just for the sake of uh, efficiency, let's rotate this. And we'll go ahead on our keyboard, hit the uh, hit 180 for a perfect 180 degree rotation. And now we're uh, we're snapped to a uh, uh, right side up on this image. Let's go ahead and do the same for our walls. Uh, and let's unhide everything by hitting Alt-H. So at this point, we'll select our wall. And let's select the other wall. Uh, let's just select this wall first. And we'll go ahead and uh, select our UV image again. And we'll do, uh, we'll navigate to the right view. For this one, it's going to be the side view. We'll hit uh, Shift H to hide everything else, and then we'll do a project from view. Okay. Then we want it to occupy as much of this space as possible, so we'll hit Control P for pack. And again, we landed upside down, so we'll just rotate, type 180, and now we're right side up. Okay. Again, we'll hit Alt H. To unhide everything. By the way, if you're you see that you know you're not getting a sense of depth, like right here, objects that are further away are not shrinking. Notice the barrels are all the same size. Hit the number five, and that switches you to perspective view. We'll go ahead and select this one. Again, select the same test map. Right, and this time, you know we're facing the right ortho. We want to go on the other side, the left ortho. So let's go ahead, and I think it's Control-3. There we go. We'll hide the others by using Shift-H, and we'll do a project from view. Then we'll select it all, Control-P to pack. And this time, what you'll see is that we're, we're looking at it in a, uh, it's rotating it in a different direction. So we're just going to hold R and rotate it to the right side up. And uh, we'll do that exactly by tapping 90. And then this time, we'll have to snap it into place. So we'll get close, as close as we can. Let's zoom in a little bit here. I'm just using G for grab. And then when we're close enough like this, we'll hit Shift S for the Snap menu, and we'll say Selected to Pixels, which is similar to Selected to Grid. And now we should be perfectly snapped. Let's go ahead and unhide everything. All right, so now we have, here's our one side, here's the other side, Here's our ground. Let's go ahead and remove this uh, this light. Right. So here's our uh, currently our layout, and notice it reflects even the shapes after the boolean. So notice here we've got a little issue which we'll probably have to redo after the boolean is executed, and then we'll have to UV our hallways. Um, that's it for this lesson. In the next one, we're going to talk about how to UV more complex shapes like the ceiling.